from exploiting a game with concrete rules and objectives to achieving goals in an open world condition with infinite options to play around with, OpenAI has dropped yet another mind-blowing research in the realm of game AI. Previously, OpenAI had developed a game of hide and seek where AI agents are able to play with each other. And through countless rematch and trials, they then developed different strategies to win their games and at the same time, unexpectedly developed strategies to exploit the game engine itself in order to win their games. And just a few weeks ago, for the first time in history, OpenAI released a Minecraft research where an AI agent demonstrated a Minecraft survival playthrough up to crafting a diamond pickaxe. What makes this research so impressive is that, to put it into perspective, there is this competition called the Mine RL that has been in the running for the past few years, where the objective is to make an AI agent that can successfully find and mine diamonds from scratch. While there are many participants with Minecraft AIs that attempt to find diamonds, none of the AIs created have ever reached the level to successfully obtain the iron tools or go beyond that. However, this time, with OpenAI's Minecraft agent, there is a 2.5% chance of not only finding diamonds but also crafting diamond tools, which require finding multiple diamond ores in a single run. What's even better is that every survival run this AI agent makes is on a completely random Minecraft seed. This means that the AI agent has to play on a different map every single time, adding to the difficulty the AI has to face, but also retaining the realism of how we actually play Minecraft. Oh, please! Since we never replay the same map over and over again, and further prevents the AI from overfitting on an optimized route on a single map during training, but would be completely confused when run on other seeds. But what is revolutionary is not the Minecraft agent OpenAI proposed here, but instead is its method in being able to train these kinds of game agents. In this paper that OpenAI published with its Minecraft agent video pre-training, VPT, learning to act by watching unlabeled online videos, demonstrates how by using a small amount but accurately labeled data, which includes the mouse coordinates on the screen and the keyboard strokes in relation to an action in Minecraft, they can then train an AI to learn how to accurately label any Minecraft-related videos from YouTube and with a labeling accuracy of up to 90%. By using the AI called IDM, short for Inverse Dynamics Model, to label and labeled Minecraft footage from YouTube, they were able to obtain training data which is up to 70k hours of gameplay. With this enormous amount of newly labeled gameplay, OpenAI then trained another model which predicts an action solely from the past frames called the VPT Foundation Model. To put it simply, this model is a behavioral cloning AI at heart, imitating what human players do in the game world. This is similar to a smaller research I've covered previously where the author taught the AI how to play CSGO with behavioral cloning but with a much simpler model in a smaller dataset. However, from only behavioral cloning on these 70k hours of footage where if you deploy an AI agent with this state, carrying an abundance of knowledge, well, although at first it can punch some trees and make a crafting table, but the next thing you know the AI is swimming, punching animals, eating rotten flesh, or just pillar jumping in the middle of nowhere just because it can. So this is where fine tuning comes in. Since the AI agent that just learned 70k hours of knowledge doesn't know what to do, but does have a skill set of basically doing any easy Minecraft actions, by training the AI with a demonstration of a specific series of tasks, and in this research case is building a house, this fine tune process adjusts the AI agent to become more efficient at making progress in the game, and essentially giving the AI a goal to the game. So instead of just copying any actions, it's now able to craft the wooden tools from the crafting table, mine cobblestone from the ground, then use those cobblestones to craft stone tools all in a sequential and progressive manner, which also outperforms the speed of obtaining the resources and tools way faster than without fine tuning. There are also some other unrelated actions or as I like to call it, side quests that the AI is able to do as well. Say, exploring villages. You can see that the agent will go into the houses, break a bed, steal it, pick it up smoothly, and walk out like nothing happened. 
or loot the chests inside one of the houses, though it did get stuck for quite a bit. It was still able to take all the emeralds and get out smoothly while walking around and occasionally punching the haystacks, which is pretty interesting. If there is a dataset that can fine-tune village looting, we can definitely see large improvements since this was only fine-tuned on building a house. But in order to get the game agent to do so much more in this environment with infinitely many choices to make, this is where the classic algorithm for every game agent comes in. Reinforcement learning. By setting rewards for the AI agent when achieving a certain level of progress in Minecraft, this greatly improves the efficiency of the AI making the optimal decisions instead of digging a random hole in the middle of nowhere or using wood to build this random hut right beside a pool of water. So it is this 70k hours behavioral cloning with fine tuning plus reinforcement learning that created this pretty big milestone moment in open world gaming AI. So here you have it, the AI successfully crafting a diamond pickaxe and even a diamond helmet that it didn't even wear through this super huge and complicated process. Even though the diamonds were found pretty much through vertical mining and being lucky digging around the bedrocks, this has been one hell of a milestone I did not think I was able to see this soon. But it would be cool to see AI agents explore caves more and fight against in-game mobs which they did not show in this video. On the other hand, reinforcement learning is not always magical too. If you start with only reinforcement learning, the AI agent will have literally no progress. So a good mix of different techniques and great understanding of AI architecture is very crucial in developing great AIs. On another note, there's also this small tiny thing that kind of bothers me about this AI agent, which is AI agent crafting with the recipe book in the crafting menu. In many instances, you can see that the AI would directly click the recipe book instead of using the 2x2 or 3x3 crafting space, which is kind of disappointing since that is one of the signifying features of Minecraft. But training an AI on doing exactly that would probably add another layer of difficulty in developing and training the AI agent. And maybe AI agents can find out and create an optimal speedrun route for different Minecraft seeds. And I would love to see how soon we are able to witness the first ever AI agent that successfully enters the nether or even fights the ender dragon and it might be sooner than we think. And thank you for watching, a big shout out to Andrew Luschelius, Chris Ledoux, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. If you have any questions, feel free to ask on my Discord too. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.